Yo, 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 what up? What's going on? Everybody good? I am a little stuffed. My uh, amazing chef of a wife cooked some uh, portobello mushroom burgers, and um, I am uh, pretty full. So I'm going to keep my energy levels up, but just know if I start to doze off, she did it to me. So, um, whew, those were good. Those were good. So us, you know, cutting back on meat, uh, so much meat, has really been effective uh, for energy levels. I do feel the difference. She feels the difference as well. We've been able to um, get some anti-inflammatory um, things going on with her uh, arthritis that she had and that's cleared up significantly so i'll keep you guys posted on uh the the meat piece um i'm telling you right now that you will feel a difference if you um go in and, and with an open mind realizing that you don't have to cut every single you know meat or dairy or everything out but limiting that stuff the way your body processes it is is amazing uh for sure so uh, we are everybody joining now, so we'll get right into it. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight about creatine, and then we're going to spend the first half about 15 minutes talking about creatine, and then we're going to talk about fat burners. Uh, so we're going to break it down. You know, we always come with the science here, and, you know, we don't do the bro science. We're not going into men's health and, you know, women's fitness and all those type of um uh, they're not even journals. Well, I say magazines that are, you know, just kind of putting out information to appease a certain business market. So we just like to stick with straight with the facts here, and uh, we open it up for questions. We'll be, you know, no longer than thirty minutes to be respectful of everyone's time, and then we will make a move from there. Um, and I'll turn it over to you guys to ask any questions. So creatine, um, it comes from the Greek word kreis, which means flesh. So it's a Greek word. Um, Creatine itself is a derivative of an American word, and its creatine is just an amino acid derivative. That's all it is, and it's found in the cells of our body, and it's stored primarily in muscle. So that's really what creatine is. And it's a natural supplement, and it's one of the world's most popular and effective uh, supplements, and we'll talk about specifically why it's effective and uh, why it's caught on so well since the 80s. Actually, since the 70s, they usually really kind of been utilizing creatine because of its effects. It plays an important role in the tissue and where your energy levels are at because they rise and fall so quickly, specifically in the muscle. Through all, you know, your tissues in your system, you have, you know, specific things that, you know, go one in that system and that um in that tissue but muscle most of all more than any go up and they go down and they drop an energy level specifically in the muscle so what creatine does it acts as a short sharp burst of energy um or a recharge to the cells that's really all it does it moves that energy from around the cells and it goes to where it's you know generated to then it moves to where it's needed and it helps, and that's what helps in aid in muscle recovery. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But those are one of those specific things that help in the muscle recovery. Um, as we already talked about, it's naturally found in your in your uh, your body. It's actually made in your body, and it's acquired through um, your body making it. And about fifty percent of the others comes from you know meat, fish, dairy. Um, so that's where your creatine comes from. So your body can function about 50% of your creatine uh, by itself, and the other comes from your diet. Now, you did hear me say fish, meat, uh, excuse me, um, and dairy. But if you are a vegan or vegetarian, there you should have no issues, you know, under normal circumstances, getting enough creatine with, you know, with the vegetables that you're eating. Um, you should be fine, but that's something to consider that maybe a supplement if you don't feel that you're getting a proper diet as a vegan or a vegetarian then you may want to supplement your creatine uh so any questions so far you know keep the questions coming um so you know a diet containing animal products is about 50 percent of a daily creatine requirement and like you said the body makes the other half so that's the way you know creatine works inside the system so why do people take creatine supplements? That's the big question that I was getting. And I'll just go over a few of the things from research that I've done over the past couple of days, really kind of check out specifically why people take it. 
So it's a natural, you know, supplement. It's a natural, actually, it's a natural process that goes on your body, and it's also a supplement that's as well. So the concentration of creatine in a supplement is much higher than it is in your body. So supplementing creatine powder provides ATP energy levels, and there's no reason to get into the ATP. That's your guys' homework tonight. That's a whole different subject, but ATP levels and improves your high-intensity exercise performance. Uh, creatine also stimulates key biological uh, processes that cause for increased muscle rate and muscle size. These are actually scientific journals that have proven this. Creatine improves numerous factors, including strength, uh, ballistic power, sprint ability, muscle endurance, uh, see what other ones that I wrote now, resistance to fatigue, muscle mass, recovery, and actually brain performance. And we'll get into that as well. So this is why athletes use creatine supplements to train and increase their muscle performance. Because as we said before, your body makes about 50% of your creatine and then the others that you get from, you know, your diet and how you take in food inside your system. So when your body reaches the threshold of how much creatine can it absorbs, it will come out through your urine. So, you know, you hit this loading phase of creatine and that's to saturate the cells and volumize your cells. But when you are saturating that, that only usually happens. You need to do that or low creatine for like six to seven days. After that, you know, and even in that 20 gram that usually people load, or we'll get into that in question while as far as how much you should be taking. But say, for example, me, I go in there and I take 20 grams for that first seven days. Usually your body processes about five grams is the normal take for someone that's my size. And then from there, I'm good to go. So all you're doing in that loading phase is saturating your cells to volumize that creatine for that increased energy. So that's why that loading phase comes from. Um, and creatine is also something that has been uh, scientifically proven to help brain function. Because as we know, your brain uses a lot of energy. So as we choose creatine to help boost alertness, and uh, there's numerous studies, and we'll get into that about the, I went through kind of the meat and potatoes of the studies and just kind of wrote down some things that I thought would be important to bring tonight just for you guys uh, to know and do some more research for yourself. Um, and it, one of the studies went underway, says that creatine supplementation might be useful in uh, neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease and mild depression. Um, there isn't enough information on this to say creatine in children, adolescents, and pregnant women um, is effective or ineffective. So the current guidelines is recommend for those three categories, do not take it. And uh, once again, that's children, adolescents, and pregnant women. So adolescents, I would say up to the age of about 16, I would stay away from that. On the strength of the studies that are out there, there's really not a lot of studies um, specifically targeting these areas. So if they're not targeting these areas, I don't really want to say, you know, hey, you know, you, you can take that at 12 or pregnant woman to be fine because the studies are not out there for that. Um, also, those that are, exist have pre-existing kidney conditions um, should seek your doctor's advice before you go ahead and take any type of supplement with creatine because it worries process through the kidney. And if you're having kidney issues, um, that's something that needs to be brought up to your doctor. Um, so before you take creatine, and if you have a pre-existing condition uh, with kidneys, please go and get that checked out before you take the supplement. Um, it's generally safe for the public. I mean, study after study after study I found has really had a consensus that creatine is very safe um, and is one of the safest things supplement-wise that you can take out that is effective uh, for your system. Um, so there's no supplements that are really normal, balanced diet and creatine products. So if you supplement those well, you should be absolutely fine. It's getting into the piece of the athletes and why they take actual creatine as a supplement to go over those things like your muscle endurance, your sprint ability, your recovery, your muscle mass. Those things are highly, highly important for an athlete. So that's why they supplement that. So they utilize what their body's producing. They utilize what they get from, you know, their meats, their dairies. Um, their fishes, and they also utilize what they're getting inside of the supplementation simply because they're burning it. Because remember, creatine is stored for such a short time in your system. It's for that short burst of energy. 
So let's talk about some therapeutic uses of creatine. Uh, some things that I wrote down that I found that dietary creatine in, in studies wise um, have been tried for treatment of a range of muscle fiber breakdown. So it actually helps scientifically proven that muscle breakdown recovery um, is helped by creatine because of what it does is the volumization and generation of energy and ATP in those cells. So that's an actual one that we can check off the box and say that's actually scientifically proven. Um, a successful application has almost been put for muscular dystrophy. They actually give creatine to those muscular dystrophy um, patients with those with that disability to help speed up their muscle recovery. Um, they've actually had some positive results from that. People who've had muscular dystrophy to people who have um, used creatine with it and without it. And they've seen that people with muscular dystrophy who's used creatine have actually seen better results because of what it does and the levels of the supplementation they have um, that's actually highly effective. So that's another one we can check off to say science has proven that. Um, and then while this is still being scientifically proven, and it's in this trial phase, which means that it's in this infancy of science research. We haven't done a lot of linear regression and, and things like that on it. But we can say that the creatine supplementation over about four months appeared to improve um, no adverse side effects and considered a actually known helper for Parkinson's and Huntington disease. So those are still, and the verdict's not out on that, so I wouldn't take that to the bank, but they're actually starting to do those trials, which means longer studies, you know, over a year to two years. And so in the next three or four years, we should be actually coming out to see if there's been any help with creatine in Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease. And um, the last thing that I have down here is that um, what recent study shows that creatine synthesis and transport of storage are um, something that a woman has um, in pregnancy. And what ends up happening is, is that over a study of 270 women um, done, done by Dr. Radev, uh, found that the pregnant women who had less creatine in their urine gave birth to significantly smaller babies. Now that's not going to say, hey, you know, you need to supplement creatine when you're pregnant because the studies are saying that. But what they're saying of the levels of creatine that your body produces and the levels of creatine that are also found in food, um, you can actually see that there's been a study to say that the babies who had the mothers who had a higher level of creatine actually had a heavier baby weight. So that's one of the things that we can check off there. And um, the next step is to look at the maternal diet and the maternal creatine concentrations, and that'll be the next study. Go ahead and see if we can improve that. So is creatine harmful? No. So creatine, unless you have those liver issues before or let there's extenuating circumstances, creatine in a very general sense is, you know, a case by case product is very, very healthy and it's fine. Adolescents from 16 up really can take it without any issues whatsoever. Um, you know, creatine is often few, uh, confused with um, creatine 9, which creatine 9 is the actual derivative of creatine. So that's what you'll see on your blood results and things like that. It's not actual creatine in your system that they're measuring. It's a breakdown of that creatine, which is uh, creatine 9. Um, and creatine 9 in, in that particular sense is the breakdown of creatine. And that's what you're usually getting in your lab results. So if your creatine um, levels are you know high, then they'll have a higher breakdown um, of the other substance. Um, so increased creatine in your urine is commonly what happens if your kidneys aren't functioning properly. So that's where it's coming out if you'll see in your blood results and that was, you know, happening. So when you see those things in there, just make sure, you know, you go to your doctor. I'm sure, you're, you know, hopefully your doctor brings that up to you. Anyways, he should um, about those particular levels because that could be a sign of something wrong uh, with your kidneys. Um, and also, the only other thing that I found study-wise is that creatine does cause water retention. So the water retention piece is, you know, something that's kind of um, people have to go in knowing that because of what it's doing. It's volumizing your cells. It's putting water uh, more, actually attaching more water to those cells uh, because of the creatine and the added supplementation. So be aware that if you do supplement creatine, you're going to see a water gain, um, usually maybe five to seven pounds, sometimes people more, sometimes a little less. Um, but you will see that. That, um, simply because you will have water retention. And that's another important reason why the kidneys come into play is that you got to make sure that your kidneys are good. And the doctor is just saying that everything is good to go for taking it uh, because if you have any you know, kidney issues uh, and the water retention, it, it won't help that at all. 
Um, so going back to everything, there's really no issues that I've seen evident that gives us about 15 minutes there about creatine. Um, so, you know, please keep your questions coming. Um, if you have any issues or, or questions about creatine, um, we'll save those towards the end. So those are all the things that I found. Creatine overall um, throughout is a very good safety record that I found. There's really no clinical issues. Um, and the good thing about it is you really, you know, as far as, you know, putting too much creatine in your system, your body will push that out through urine. And if your kidneys are working fine, then there should be no issues um, whatsoever. There's no, you know, human safety data um, that's saying anything bad about creatine. And there's no long-term studies besides if you have pre-existing conditions. Um, so eat a simply good balanced diet. If you're a vegan, you know, make sure that if you need to supplement your creatine, you do, um, you know, 50% is made in your body. The other, the other 50% comes from, you know, um, your meats, uh, your dairies, your fishes, uh, but uh, vegans and vegetarians usually with a balanced diet don't have any problem getting enough creatine in their system. And all of our athletes, you know, that are, you know, either, you know, any type of athlete really, I can say can benefit from creatine because of those uh, reasons that we had li uh, previously listed. Um, so I recommend it. You know what I mean? It's something that I've taken for years without any effects. Um, you don't have, you can cycle on it you can cycle off of it it's really not a big deal um the way i load it up is i load it with about 20 grams and you're actually supposed to take creatine after your workout because no creatine that you're utilizing during your workout is from that workout it's always from the previous day that's stored in your cells so you slamming creatine doing absolutely nothing for that day is going to be the next day that that creatine is utilized and i load it for about a week get myself super saturated and then after that, I go down about five grams and, you know, that's what I take, uh, you know, with my creatine. So that, so that kind of sums up creatine. We're going to move right into the other subject that has come up quite a few times is fat burners. So let's talk about fat burners. So fat burners are generally a combination of herb derived stimulants, essential fatty acids, and um, hydrocitric acid. And we'll break that down to make it super simple for everybody. But the herb derived stimulants, you know, include caffeine, they include ephedra, um, and, you know, two or three of those stimulants uh, are usually stacked together. And that's what you look at to look at inside those fat burning pills. Now, back in the day, and I'm talking about maybe it was 2019, so like 15 years ago, ephedra was out and they were putting it inside fat burners. And I have some studies written on that. And that's why you'll see, and it's very important to kind of understand when talking about things like this, any supplement that we talk about is not considered a drug. So the FDA doesn't test, uh, test it. So that's why you'll see so many dietary supplement companies come out because none of their stuff is tested. So basically, I can go downstairs right now, grind up some flour, say it's creatine and, and sell it. And then no one's stopping me from selling it because of the fact that FDA does not regulate any supplement. So a GNC, anything you order from bodybuilding.com are considered dietary supplements. So you are not getting anything tested by the FDA. Now, some supplement companies have went the further step and have their stuff third party tested, which is great. And it's amazing. It costs a lot of Money to do, and it shows a lot of it, a lot of the quality of the company. But don't be confused that when you see anything dietary supplement in a vitamin shop, it has not been tested and FDA approved because it is not considered a uh, drug. It's not considered a drug. So, ephedrine is effective, and it was predictably combined with aspirin, usually in those, um, I forgot what those old um, ephedra uh, fat, uh, burning pill. What, what they would do was raise your blood pressure and your heart rate, and it was causing people to die in fatal heart attacks, um, arrhythmias, strokes. So people would wonder, like, what's going on? And people would be dieting, and they'd be taking these, and their heart rate would be speeding up. And now it's banned. And that's why it's banned, because there was study after study after study showing that ephedra would increase your heart rate, increase your blood pressure, and then never elevate it back down over time. So you got to be very, very careful with that, of what you see out there in those supplements and ask, you know, and people who are working at the vitamin shop, <laughs> I, I hope they know, but get, but get on Google as well, or, or send me, you know, a DM, I love questions, because if I don't know, I'll tell you, I'll go ahead and try to study and research it or reach out to the people that, you know, can or, or can help me help us out in trying to understand what it does. So both ephedra and caffeine work in increasing your metabolic rate. Yeah, they do do that. 
which can be done more safely and cheaply uh, by exercising and eating less. That's really what it is. I am not a fan. I will say it, I am not a fan of fat burners at all. All of my athletes across the world will tell you I have never, ever recommended a fat burner. And when they come to me, and you, guys, you know who you are. Hey, coach, they got this new fat burner out. All right, let's talk about the ingredients in there. It's going to be caffeine. It's going to be some hydro uh, uh, citric acid. And it's going to be a couple of other things that are fillers in there that's going to increase your heart rate. And sure, you're going to burn more calories because your heart rate is increased. But you can do that through proper diet and proper cardio and learning how to train your heart. And you can do that without wasting that type of money. So also what's in there is essential fatty acids to include CLAs and flaxseed oil. Now, CLAs and flaxseed oil and fat burners, let's take the fat burners away. CLAs is great. And CLA stands for um, conjugated um, lyosic acid. So what that does is just a derivative of a fatty acid and then the flaxseed oil. All that stuff is goodness. You can take CLA, you can get that as a supplement. It's actually a good supplement. And you can get that as flaxseed oil. But what your heart rate is elevated for is the specific reason of the caffeine that does it. And it's a huge dose of caffeine and it's a huge dose of ephedra that they now have banned. And that's why your heart rate was elevated and you were burning more calories simply because your heart rate was beating faster, which isn't necessarily a good thing when it's not natural when you're running and your body is trying to balance and your heart rate goes up sure that's great but when it's up there and it stays there and you're walking around looking all crazy because your heart's beating at work and that's what was going on with even some of my friends and i remember i had took it before and i was on the uh the cardio machine i got all the cardio and i'm walking back i'm sweating and i'm like it's been 30 minutes and i feel like i'm still doing and it was suppress your appetite and not in a good way and it would look like you're on crack. Like that's what, you know, if that is, if that is, you know, something to be real about, like a federal, you were walking around scratching like Pookie on New Jack City. It was ridiculous. So, you know, it was definitely something that, you know, that's the reason that they banned it. And now we know the reason why is because it elevated your heart rate and it kept it there. And, you know, going back to, you know, a lot of the clinical studies that came out on CLA, which is good. And I, I wrote a couple of down. I have here, um, Dr. Michael Paritza, um, he's the director of food research and uh, University of Wisconsin said, and I, and I quote, uh, the clinical evidence is certainly emerging that can be helpful talking about CLAs and uh, flaxseed oil, particularly in controlling fat uh, gain and weight gain. So there's no reason to get a fat burner. You can get a um, um, bag of flaxseed for $5 and then you can get, you know, um, your proper essential nutrients and you can get some CLAs and you can pick that up from a vitamin shop or bodybuilding or wherever you shop for, you know, $15, $20. So, you know, and it's going to be way more effective than getting a pill. And I went to some shops and I'm just like, wow, this could be a placebo effect where they have, you know, absolutely nothing in here. Um, you know, caffeine, you know, maybe, and some, um, some, uh, hydro citric acid, and that's about all they have in there. And they're selling these fat burners. Maybe I'm in the wrong industry um, for like $70, 60, even go to Walmart with the cheaper ones. You'll see fat burner burn fat while watching TV, eating pizza. And it's $60. And it's probably nothing in there, but caffeine, um, some flaxseed and um, specifically, you know, some conjugated CLAs. So if you're going to go ahead and buy that amount of money, 60, $70, just get $10, $20 worth of supplements. It'll last you longer and it'll be way more effective. And, you know, if you want to get a caffeine supplement, you know, or pre-workout, which has nitrous oxide in there that opens up your blood, then you should be good to go. So um, that's the thing about CLAs. Another report said in the International Journal of Obesity uh, from a Swedish group of experts showed that overweight men taking CLA lost more fat than those taking, uh, not taking the product. So CLA is a proven thing. Um, black seed oil definitely is a proven thing. And the um, hydrocitric acid comes from fruit. So you can get that there. So that's something that you don't have to take. So once again, going back to the bottom line, which I like to talk about, fat trappers and fat burners are expensive. 50, 60, $70 for you're getting absolutely nothing. There's, if you can show me a study Besides CLAs, um, flat, uh, hydrocitric acid, and um, let's see, what's the other one? And flaxseed. Besides those, if you can show me a study showing that fat 
uh, trappers or fat burners are effective, I would be happy to read it and revoke or recant anything I said. But, you know, the six, seven, eight journals that I was able to peruse through over the past couple of days kept saying the same things over and over and over again. Save your money. Please do not go out there and buy fat burners. They are not effective. A proper diet with proper exercise, staying within the confines of calories, um, just not overeating, eating complex, good, whole, healthy, plant-based foods along with lean meats, um, will really do the trick. There's no re there's no magic trick. You can't sit up there, and that's what they advertise, right? They play on the emotions of your laziness. So they know that you know getting the going to the gym is tough. Going to the gym sometimes is um, you know a struggle. We all got kids, we got families, so they can go ahead and they know the fact that they can advertise this to say, hey, I can go out here and eat pizza and um, you know not work out and take this pill and not change my lifestyle and they're charging you $70 for a placebo effect. So I'm sorry to any of my supplement companies out there to burst your bubble, but I gotta be honest with my people and just let you know that do not waste your money on, um, do not waste your money on fat burners, don't do it. Um, you know, if you got the willpower to stay on a diet and exercise, you know, then you got the willpower to, you know, um, handle that for a certain amount of time, there is no reason to get fat burners. Um, if you, and if you're not going to go stick to a diet or routine, does a fat burner going to really be effective anyway? Now, when it was back in the day when people were dying, when they were taking effective, sure, it was effective for that time period. But like I said, it elevated your blood pressure and it elevated your heart rate to the point where people were having heart attacks, um, arrhythmia, uh, strokes from it. And then they took that compound out because they were stacking it with caffeine and ephedra. And you can do that now by simply learning how to elevate your heart rate. And then once you get your heart rate elevated, just stop talking there during the gym. And if you keep your heart rate elevated, keep moving through those, do supersets, and you can keep your heart rate just as high as you can with the bat burn. So I like to keep it within the 30 minute confines, people. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. We had a lot of people tune in um, today. And please leave me. Um, I'll right now I'll take, you know, three or four um, questions so we can make sure we keep it between our 730 and 8. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I will be over the next uh, two or three sessions going over, you know, different supplements, you know, going over protein powder, going over a big one that I saw was pre-workout, um, you know, going over specifically a little bit more in depth in CLAs. Uh, we've already hit creatine and fat burners. So any supplements that you specifically want to talk about, please, you know, keep your question. I mean, you guys have been great with sending me things in, in Messenger or just leaving things on the page about our particular topics. I'm glad people are going out and learning and researching and not letting the industry get in the way of your goals because realize the fitness industry is going to try to make a buck on you. So if they can play on your laziness, they will. So don't let them do that. Research for yourself and always remember that, you know, going the uh, proper diet, whole foods with plenty of water, it's just going to be the way and watch the way fall off way more effectively and naturally than a fat burner can. So I'll stay around a couple of minutes for any questions that you have. Please shoot them on. And if not, um, you can leave them um, in this uh, particular blog and I'll get to them and uh, make sure I try to answer those. And um, in a couple of weeks, we'll have a new subject. Please keep your topics coming. They keep me studying. They keep me sharp on my game. And uh, the biggest thing, if your coach um, can't explain it, then they shouldn't be coaching. So that's the biggest thing for me. Or if their trainer can't explain it, then they shouldn't be training. So that's the biggest thing. Learn for yourself. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. All right, everybody. So I'm sure I'll get more questions once um, some people, other people view it. Thanks for tuning in live. Please go back and check it out again if you have any questions. I really appreciate you guys. Keep Team Best Fit um, moving and keep me learning. So thank you so much. You guys have a good night and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Peace.